What do you want? Give me a beer. Your kind's not welcome here. I said I wanted a beer. We have no more. Very well. Very well. I'll see what I have. Good man. Everyone drink up. We're closing. Innkeeper, do that again and I'll get angry. Wouldn't want that, would you? No. All right. I'll just tend to my business and be on my way. What can I do for you? I'm a witcher. Bah, by the eternal fire. Have any work for me? No. Ask the Reverend. Okay. I'll speak with him. What can I do for you? Why the gloom? I don't talk to strangers. Do you for five orans? For that, I talk to a bar guest all day. The plague was devastating. People died in droves. The wailing lingered for three moons. If not for the Reverend, we'd all have perished. No wonder we're wary of strangers. You don't know what it's like when the plague takes your family. The Reverend prayed all day to the eternal fire, taking no sustenance. His penance freed us from sin and strengthened our faith. We began by cleansing our homes of sin and filth. We gathered it up, and by the next day, all our foulness was buried or gone. The Reverend then spoke to all who remained. You have done well cleansing your households of sin. I know it was difficult, I know they be kin, but the eternal fire sent pestilence on them as punishment for their sins. You are pure, you shall live. And we believed him, then went outside. The frost was biting, but we did our penance, crawling round the village, praying at the five chapels. The next day the village was quiet, as if all were asleep. Fewer have fallen sick since. An edifying tale. Thanks. You saved me, right? I helped. I wonder what'll happen to me now. Waiting for your kin to come? No. My family has passed on. Sorry, kid. It's all right. I barely knew them. Greetings, Ansem. You look a tinge fatigued. Wait, didn't you rescue that child at the gate? By chance. By chance? Really? If only the local peasants chance to do good once in a while. Oh, no matter. What can I get you? Nothing now. I'll see you later. Hmm. Three ounces of Optimum Martyr, a drop of Mercury Solution. Uh, oh. Sorry, I got lost in thought. Greetings. Greetings. I'm Cogstein, alchemist. Geralt, witcher. A witcher? How much would you ask for an opportunity to examine your body? I don't think you could afford it. You would be doing a great service to science. All right, fine. Though I perceived you as someone who valued reliable knowledge. I respect science and scientists, alchemists too. And I guess I expect the same in return. I see. Well, hmm. Maybe you can agree to a post-mortem, then. Keep talking and I might change my mind. Regarding alchemists, that is. All right, all right. I'm sorry. You don't look like a local. I live in Vizima, but I'm just returning from a great convention of alchemists, pyromancers, and geomancers in Oxenfort. Wonderful city which uh, a cradle of science. I don't doubt it. Did the convention reach any specific conclusions? It was an incredible experience. I presented my dissertation on... specific? Conventions aren't meant to be specific. Then I'm not sure I see the sense. Science is like a great river, full of currents, whirls, and treacherous shallows. A single raftsman can never know every secret of the river. He must sail to the harbor and share his knowledge with other raftsmen. And get drunk and spend his last money on whores. I think I see the point now. Hmm. Science is like a river. Uh, sorry, I got lost in thought. You were talking about returning to Vizima. Ah, yes. 
Because of this quarantine, I'm losing time in this inn. I have extremely important research waiting. And what am I doing sitting in this dump and drinking alcohol? Badly distilled alcohol. I've sent a message to my friend, another alchemist. He is my only hope. Hopefully he will send me a pass. Hmm. Well, I wish you luck. Thank you. They must admit me, they must. Do you ask everyone for permission to examine or dissect them? Of course not. But you're a mutant. A scientifically wrought improvement. Something unnatural. That explains it. Don't take offense. I'm merely curious. Need any help from a witcher? I do. Check the notice I hung outside. I wanted to ask you about alchemy. Finally, someone worth talking to. Here I thought the locals had no interests beyond their daily concerns. I'm not exactly a local. And think about it. If the locals were all interested in alchemy, they wouldn't have much need for you. Ha! Huh. Typically short-sighted. Witcher, alchemy is the mother of all sciences. And do you know why? For it allows us to understand the world. All that surrounds you is none other than the alchemy you strive so dutifully to deride. Alchemical processes transpire in your body at all times. They allow you to eat, breathe, and excrete. What's more, they are responsible for your thoughts and feelings. Alchemy is life. We need to change the subject before the peasants decide to burn us at the stake. One cannot shut the mouth of science. But fine, what do you wish to know? How do you obtain alchemical bases? You need equipment to obtain the correct distillate. I myself use an atonator coupled with an alembic and equipped additionally with a rectifying column and a copper cooler. And if I don't have a coupled atonator handy? I see. Field work. Hmm. Olaf must have some decent vodka or spirit that could serve as an alchemical base. Where do I get ingredients? If you wish to obtain components yourself, you'll need books containing drawings and descriptions of ingredients derived from both plants and animals. Peddlers are your other alternative, but they'll rip you off. When I require monster tissue or organs, hmm, well, I hire a witcher or a hunter. I'm interested in formulae. Ready-made formulae are rare and difficult to acquire, so I encourage you to experiment, modify recipes you already have. Most people underestimate the value of using the empirical method in science. I think I've heard enough. But we've only just begun. Farewell. Greetings. Greetings. What a despicable place. I'm trapped here with my goods while my wife and children wait in the city. Why is that? Vizima's gates are closed due to the plague. The gods be my witness. Nothing ruins trade like an epidemic. I guess we just have to wait. Most of the diseased have died off, but the beast and bandits now spread their own terror. All we're missing are tax collectors. Can I ask you something? Yes? What's with this plague? What of it? Tis some variety of the bubonic. To be safe, I avoid any who appear even slightly ill. Aren't you afraid? 
I'm immune to infectious diseases. My grandfather claimed the same, insisting all the while that his bubonic ulcers were merely boils. May the ground lie lightly upon him. Yes? Tell me about the beast. I overheard it described as a phantom, appearing from nowhere, murdering those with a heavy conscience. Interesting. <laughs> Royal officials would make a true feast for the beast, and other ghosts serve it, apparently in the form of untiring bloodhounds. I'll have to ask the locals. Yes? Any bandits in the outskirts? Indeed. They call themselves the militia and extort bribes. Also, some sect from Vizima may have arrived here. Do these men wear the salamander sign? Never met them. But if they are a sect, the Reverend ought to know something. I'll ask him. Yes? I'm forced to sell my goods out here! Bad luck. I can't enter the city either. Want to buy something? Rob me in broad daylight! Go ahead! What are you peddling? My life! See ya. Greetings. Greetings. Yes, I'm a dwarf. No, I don't support the Skyatel. Yes, I've paid both taxes and bribes. Many times. Today, in fact. Calm down, I just wanted to talk. I'll be calm in my grave. Optimistically, that won't be long now. I'll try not to miss the funeral. Make sure and show up for the execution, too. They once herded me off to see a non-human get hanged. Let me tell you, laughed my head off. I gather they don't like non-humans around here. Neither here nor anywhere in the Northern Kingdoms. An official in Vizima recently won an innovation award. Invented a gallows especially designed for dwarves. What's so innovative about that? Nothing. But think of the savings. When you're producing them in the hundreds, all that extra wood can be used to make other goods. Toy swords, for instance. Can I ask you something? Yes. Who are the Scoyatel? Terrorists, or firebrands, you'd call them. They're fighting for the rights of non-humans. Scoyatel is elven for squirrels. Called that due to the squirrel tails that dangle from their caps. Will I find any around here? You aiming to catch me off guard, or just nosy? In any case, I'll not answer you. Fine. I wouldn't want to cause you trouble. Let's talk about something else. Yes? Why do the locals persecute non-humans? Why the pricks go in, cunts? It's the natural order of things. Humans have always hated dwarves and elves. Not for me to know why. I'm not sure I understand. Then ponder it on your own. Or discuss it with that maggot brog. I don't talk to strangers about these things. Fine. Yes? Let's talk about weapons. Well, I'm no specialist, though I can forge swords. Bring me three different oars and I'll forge you an excellent steel sword. I'll look around for some more. Another thing. For 35 orans, you can have this excellent sword, Grease. It's not exactly uh, legal, but uh, I really need the gold. Uh, I'm not interested. Yes? See you later. Thank you.